Hey, it's Scott Cullen, Editor-in-Chief of Canada Report. I'm here with Frank Canada, the Canada Report's founder. And this is the second of a multi-part series where Frank does a deep dive into our 36th annual dealer survey. And here he continues with his discussion of some of the data points that did not show up in the printed October, November issues. And it's sort of an exclusive for viewers of Fridays with Frank. So let's go, Frank. What do you got for us today? I had a great discussion with Jim Caridi from RICO about the level of uh, participation on um, uh, RICO dealers uh, in uh, production print. And Jim was looking at the numbers from last year that we shared with him. And he was said, I don't think it's that high. They're saying it is that. So I said, let's take a look. And what we came up with was we had 41, 41 dealers who said, RICO dealers, who said that they sold RICO production print. But when you take a deep dive into it, there's a lot of things that don't make any sense. For instance, of that 41, 13 of them generate less than uh, 5 million in revenue and some less than 1 million. How a dealer in, in that area can sustain a production print program is not re a reasonable assumption. I talked to a, uh, a couple of RICO dealers and said, really all boils down to the tech. If they've got a tech that could really handle a product like the 7200, which is a very popular selling RICO machine, it can be done. Uh, and uh, and it was interesting enough, this one dealer said to me, they've had situations where a competitive dealer in their geography came to them and said, look, we can sell this machine, but we can't service it the way you can. Would you consider selling the con our customer a service contract? And they said, of course. And they did, which I thought was kind of interesting. So for all intents and purposes, that dealer may have a very low revenue, but he's found a way to, to do this. But the bottom line is when we talk about production printed, and you know how strongly we've emphasized that you gotta be seriously committed to this and it's expensive. There is no shortcut to this thing. And unfortunately, I, I, I don't wanna use the word that's saying that what is available is not good. It's just not enough. You have Canon, you have Konica Minolta, and you have Rico. So you have to take a look at wh what those three product lines represent. And actually all, all three are pretty significant and cover it all, uh, you know, from, uh, wide, uh, from uh, wide and large format up to industrial print. Why I'm saying that it is not, uh, not enough for dealers is all three companies do a major part of their production print business direct. Uh, I don't think there's any other way to put it. Now they have some dealers uh, that uh, will sell the, the production print product, but the main effort is clearly uh, by, by direct sales. Do they wanna change it? There is no question in my mind, at least, in, in talking to uh, the three companies, well, actually two out of the three, because we really don't talk much to Canon. Uh, uh, in talking to Rico and Conica and Alta, especially, they very much want to increase dealer participation in production. Uh, and I, I, you know, I don't, I don't know how many times we could say it, how many different ways, but the numbers clearly bear out that you get involved into production, you're going to help generate your revenue. Now, the, the, the machine I mentioned uh, at Rico, which is, uh, I just from the outside, not knowing what the actual numbers are, based upon talking to dealers, the 7200 is probably the single most successful uh, uh, product. It's a five color machine. Uh, and the street price, again, this is our estimate, not anything Rico shared with us, our estimate from the dealers we spoke to is less than $10,000. That's not a crazy price. 
But there's a second part to that, and that is the front end, the digital front end, which is a firing. And if you don't have a digital operator that's fiery trained, don't sell the machine. It's very clear what's going on when you have dealers who take on these products and are not as successful as they should be. And again, it's pointed out in the survey, who's doing what and to what degree. Because all you do is, uh, Scott asks the question, what percentage of your revenue is, uh, is it, in your revenue is uh, devoted to production print? And we can clearly see what is the revenue coming. What We know what the overall size is, what the percentage of revenue, uh, and whether that can sustain uh, a program. And it just appears to us that in some cases that is not so. So it opens the door for us to then talk to people like EFI, obviously, because they're the, the, fiery, uh, the fiery people. And they have a great program. I think it's $250 to train a digital operator. Now, why when a dealer sells a machine like the 7200, let's say, as I just said, for $10,000, I can't encourage him to spend another $250 to make sure that he's fire retrained. I, you know, I, 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 am, I am puzzled by that. Now, I, we've talked to commercial printers in the past about this unrelated to the survey and said, why? Well, uh, the one printer told us uh, we, we can't keep them. They work for, we get them trained, we, they work for us a while, then they leave. So they have a high turnover. Uh, I, I don't know if that speaks well for that commercial printer, but uh, the others who are very successful, don't. I'm talking about commercial printers, don't have that problem. And when they hire somebody new to be a digital operator, he's fiery trained. Again, it's, it's, it's all part and parcel of the same effort. And everything for us begins with the information we gather from the survey. 